Okay, are you serious? So Momar Gaddafi is dead. Do you know they pulled him out of a hole? Was he somewhere deep, deep, deep hiding in his hometown of Sarit? That's exactly what he was doing. And apparently, some reports are they pulled him out of a hole. Other reports are that they shot his legs out from underneath him as he was trying to flee with a convoy that was being attacked by NATO. Either way, I've seen pictures. I don't know if they're real or photoshopped of a dead Muammar Gaddafi. But he's not the only one that's being hunted down in this Arab Spring, if you want to call it that. I don't call it Arab Spring. I'm going to tell you what I call it. Bible prophecy of the Antichrist spirit that's moving through the Middle East or the glorious land that the Bible talks about in Daniel chapter 11. It says in Daniel 11, and then let me read to you quickly. I'm going to read to you the Associated Press. They have an article right here about Yemen's president, Ali Alabalalalalalala Saleh, who says he doesn't want to play anymore. He's wanting to quit. Now, here's what it says in Daniel chapter 11. Verse 41 says, He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. Well, we know that Ivory Coast changed leaders, getting rid of Cabo. Uh, absolutely, he had to go. And then Tunisia had an uprising and was quickly able to overthrow their leader and take over Tunisia after 23 years of a dictatorship, another Muslim monarchy. Then it was Egypt's turn and the long 32-year reign of Jose Hosne Hubarak, Mubarak, excuse me, Jose Mubarak, who went down after 32 years and is now being on trial right now for theft, robbery, corruption, and crimes to humanity. Besides that, next was Muammar Gaddafi. And today, apparently, he has been gunned down in his hometown there in Libya. Now, while that's been going on, there's been a constant pressure put on to get rid of President Assad of Syria and President Ali Alabalalalalalala Saleh of Yemen. The Bible said that the Antichrist spirit would move into the Middle East, into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. It even, in, even names some of those many countries. It says, the land of Egypt shall not escape but he shall have power over the treasures of the gold and the silver, over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Okay, now here's what the Associated Press is reporting today from Yemen. Yemen's embattled president on Wednesday. Are you serious? Is, is this happening this quickly? Because today is October 20th, 2011. But yesterday, Yemen's embattled president put forward yet another condition for leaving office. So he's trying to quit somehow without being put on trial like Mubarak or gunned down like Gaddafi. Um, but he has another condition for leaving office, demanding that the United States, the European Union, and the Gulf nations offer guarantees before he signs a deal to transfer power and to step down. If he don't hurry, they've already tried to kill him. Folks, they did. A, they tried an assassination on attempt on him once. It killed seven people around him. And he's got burns on 40% of his body. What's he talking about? He needs to understand he's not in a position of power. He's in a, he absolutely needs to bail out, surrender, and not have all these demands. He says, though, he has to have some guarantees before he signs a deal to transfer power and step down. Ali Alabalalalalalala Saleh has managed to cling to power in the face of eight months of massive anti-regime protest. The defection to the opposition of key tribal and military allies and mounting international pressure on him to step down. He has so far balked at the U.S. back plan proposed by Saudi Arabia and its five smaller allies in the Gulf Corporation Council to hand over power to his deputy and step down in exchange for immunity from prosecution. But he still won't do it. This guy's going to mess around and wind up in a hole in the ground with Gaddafi 
and the rest of the clowns of radical Islamic militant Muslim monarchies who have murdered and massacred and brought mayhem to the entire Middle East. It's going to change. Because the scripture says it's going to change. Not because Paul Begley says it's going to change. Not because I'm predicting it would happen. Not because I'm prophesying that it will. I'm only prophesying that when I prophesied that Gaddafi would fall, it was very simple. The Bible had already been prophesied. If you believe the ancient writings of Daniel, and if you believe that those writings in the 11th chapter of Daniel were for today, which I did, which I still do, although many religious leaders and people like Gary DeMar, um, who they're considered theologian reconstructionists, they don't believe that the biblical prophecies of the word are pertaining to today. But that's exactly what they're pertaining to. What are the day are they going to pertain? What do, what, do, what do you want it to be? Damascus, look, for instance, Isaiah 17, 1 says that Damascus is no longer a city, but a ruinous heap. That's never happened. Now, the prophet Isaiah prophesied that 3,000 years ago. Guess what? It's never happened. But right now, as we speak, Syria is in the most vulnerable position it's ever been in its existence. And President Assad has already can hear the hoofbeats of the galloping red horse of war, of the apocalypse, breathing down his neck. The United States President uh, Barack Obama has already said that Assad has to go. Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, has already said he will go down. The entire United Nations has put sanctions on him. Syria is in trouble, although Russia and China, or the tidings from the north and the east, which you can find in Daniel chapter 11, verse 44, are trying to hinder the fall of Syrian president Assad. And did you know that Assad's birthday is September the 11th, 1965? He was born on 9-11-65. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I want to thank my good friend Bruce in Florida who calculated that information. How close are we? Have we seen, are we on the brink of the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet in Daniel chapter 11, 31? Has this Chrislam new interfaithism movement being led by some of the prominent pastors of America as they try to bridge Christianity and Islam into one religion, a one world religion called Chrislam. It's a lie. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't mix the death, burial, and resurrection of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, with some story of a return of a prophet named Muhammad or the 12th Imam or the, or the Al- Mahadi crawling out of a well somewhere. Are you serious? What? That's not going to work. Folks, we're living in dangerous times. You take this guy right here of Yemen, and he's going down. Yemen, you can believe this. But Ali, Allah, 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 Saleh will go down. Yemen will change hands. Ugly, nasty, bloody, ugly, but will happen. Syria, Believe it or not, I don't know if Assad falls now or later or does Syria get blowed up now or later, but there's a, this intifada against Israel. All these things are biblical prophecies. They're happening. Saleh wants to, doesn't want to play anymore, but the problem is he's not in position to leverage his destiny. The Bible has already leveraged his destiny. The Antichrist spirit is rising in the Middle East. And these little dictators got to get out of the way because there's coming one dictator, one Antichrist, one world leader, and he's going to create the new world order. And he's not coming out of the Middle East. He's coming out of Europe or somewhere in a communist nation, probably Asia. But I'll tell you what is coming out of the Middle East. The false prophet. The false prophet will rise up with the Antichrist and those two kissing cousins are going to bring destruction upon the world. Are you saved? Time's running out. Would you send me a personal message right here on YouTube? I want to be saved. Do it now. Do it now. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Pastor, I want to be saved. Send it to me right now. I'll help you get saved in Jesus' name.